I'm Lance Lambert. Thanks for tuning in to the Vintage Vehicle Show. We are in Covina, California at the Thunderfest Car Show. This is a great show. It's called Thunderfest because there's a lot of noisy cars here. You're going to get a chance to see some of these cars, meet the owners, hear some great music. So do what I tell you to do every week. Just kick back, relax, and enjoy the show. I like unusual cars, and about four years ago, I saw this Volkswagen pickup with a V8 in the back seat for sale on eBay, and I looked at it and looked at it, and I kept going back and looking at it. It was really my kind of car. Well, Norm Roberts beat me to it. Uh, Norm not only beat me to it, but there's something a little special about this. Uh, tell us about it, Norm. Uh, I originally built the car in 1987 and back in Texas, moved out here. Got it all finished, redid it, repainted it and everything else, and then sold it in 95. And I didn't see it. It showed up on eBay the first time I saw it was, I don't know, uh, six, seven years later. And, uh, you know, it's been around the country. And the time you saw it, I was also watching it, and I bought it back. It's a 68 Volkswagen pickup with a, what kind of V8 in the back? Oldsmobile. Used to be a 455. It's, uh, uh, it's been bored out. It's a 461 now. All new, all redone. And when I bought it back, I got such a deal on it, I put the money in the motor. 
My knees are knocking right now, just the fear factor of what it must be like to drive this. What, what is it like? Is this just unbelievable power? It's definitely a little rocket ship. I mean, it really doesn't tend to spin the tires or anything. It takes all the power and puts it straight to the ground. Mm -hmm. And it's just hang on. That's so all the is. weight in the back gives you some interesting performance. Uh, it's got a highway gear in it, which is all that came with the Oldsmobile Tornado setup, which is what I'm running in the back. And so you don't get a lot of that low end off the drags, you know, grunt that you would out of a lot of cars. It all what's there is, is strong, but it just goes straight to the ground. What kind of reaction do you get on such an unusual vehicle? You're you're in a field of uh, there's some great cars here today, but there's also a lot of you know your five six seven Chevs, five six seven Fords, your forty Fords, the, the normal stuff. You never see yourself coming down the street. What kind of reaction do you get from people at a car show? Well, at, at a car show, it depends. Like where it's sitting here right now, most people don't even see that motor back there. They just think it's another Volkswagen. Oh yeah, it's pretty, it's cute, and away they go. Uh, the the best reaction I get is just driving it down the road. On the freeway nowadays with the cell phones and everything, it's not uncommon to see arms hanging out the windows with cell phones taking pictures as you're driving down the road. Lots of thumbs up. You know, everybody appreciates it. They see I'm driving it. That's the, the keen part. Here you're just sitting. I might have drug it here on a trailer, but on the freeway, they know you're driving it. And suicide doors, a little unusual? Uh, well, you know, when we started to redo the whole car, I was redoing the pickup part of it. I wasn't happy with the way it was. And the shop that it was at, the guy was big on doing suicide doors on the little mini trucks. And the guy is such a good artist. I mean, he, he's, an, he's an artist up here, and he's a craftsman here. And between the two of them, I knew that he would do a good job. And I said, well, let's, let's do these doors. And he did these different than what he normally does. These doors have got the jams off the doors and the car completely cut off and swapped side for side. So it's all stock mechanisms, all start stock catches, there's no aftermarket stuff, it's all original equipment, it's just on the wrong side. And you make it sound simple, I bet it wasn't. No, I mean, it took him a little while to do it, but I mean, you know, between, the way the car is, the fenders come off the car, so it makes it easy to get to that stuff, you know, and that's the way he did it. I mean, basically every square inch of the car has been reworked. Most people don't realize it, it's just, you know, because they don't know the car. Norm, I have an offer for you. This car, I am willing to pay, I think I saw it on for $15,000. I'm willing to pay $15,000 with the promise that if I sell it, I'll put it on eBay and you'll have an opportunity along with 13 million other people to purchase it again. No, I can't do that. Not anymore. Just a, just a simple no. Huh? No, not anymore. No, not, not even interested. All right. Well, Norm, thank you very much. It's a very cool car. Thank you. Uh, and and congrats for doing something a little bit different. Well, it, you know, it was fun before, and it was fun getting it back. I just didn't realize how much I missed it until it was gone. Uh -huh. Sounds like some old girlfriends there I've had. Shh, don't say that. <laughs>
I have recently re-fallen in love with early model Novas. I love the square bodies on them. Well, here is a beautiful 1964 Nova, Gary Harvey. Nice car and a bit unusual. Thank you. Uh, tried to make it just a little bit unusual. Of course, the first thing I spot is the airbrushed 55 Chev Chrome on the side. What, what made you decide to do that, and how did you know it would work as well as it does? I would like to say I'm the original person who ever thought that up, but that's not true. I, I seen a car in Arizona, a Nova, that had uh, 55 Chevy Chrome airbrushed on the side, and I says, if I ever build a Nova, that's what I'm going to do. And I took it to the guy that did the airbrush, and he says, yeah, I've seen that a lot. I do 56, I do 57, I do 55. So it wasn't new to him. You have a cage roll bar system in this, which either is a, a good posing thing or you have some potent power on this. You also have the hood on it that indicates that this thing scoots. What's going on underneath the hood? I have a 383 stroker motor um, with a five-speed uh, Tremec transmission. It does get up and go pretty good. I've never had it on the racetrack or this drag strip. Um, I really like the looks of the roll bar. I like the looks of the racy look, the mini tub and the roll bar and that sort of thing. I don't know if it's just that I've taken an interest in these, uh, the 63 and 64s, but I do notice they're popping up in magazines more often than they have in the past. Uh, have you noticed a resurgence of the popularity? It used to be the 66, 67 that was the most popular one. Uh, and some people still have that preference. You're right, the, the smaller, boxier ones are uh, preferred to the uh, racing scene because they are faster, they're quicker, they're lighter. So a lot of the racers are using them. It looks like you've hit the middle ground as far as you could have one that's kind of subdued in stock or you can have one that's over the top. You're floating somewhere on the line. That's true. Uh, I did, uh, I've done 90% of this work. I painted it, I put the motor in it, I've done part of the interior, I did the roll bar. Uh, so I did it, it was a self, self man made job. So I didn't put a whole lot of money in. Some of the guys take the car to the shop and they put in 70 grand and they roll away with their, their cars. And, and sometimes those that can get way over the top. This is a daily driver if I want to. And it, uh, I drive it to work once in a while even. I uh, try to keep out of the rain though. I bet you're very careful where you park this. Yeah, you betcha. I park way away. Well, Gary, thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle Show. This is a very cool car. Here at the car show, I have noticed a half a dozen cars that have really drawn a crowd. In fact, we've had to have some security help to get the people back so I can get the shots. Probably number one on that list out of all the cars in this show is Jesus Alonso's 1950 pickup truck. Can you yes. tell us about it, Jesus? Yes, uh, this is a 1950 uh, F1 uh, Ford truck. We uh, modified it where we replaced the cab. We put a 47 cab on it, and we replaced the bed on it. We put a 48 cab. We put a 36 grill. Uh, we put a 58 Chevy engine in it with the transmission on it. And basically, uh, the rolling chassis is all, all original Ford, just modified to be uh, with uh, airbags. And it drives pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's a 327? Yeah, 283, I'm sorry. 283? Yes. You have Roma's Auto on the side. Uh, I understand there's a story there. Yeah, that's uh, the name of uh, my dad's shop from back in the 60s. They were in the 50s. They were, they were starting to put a shop together, and it all came to it in 1964, and it started from there. One of the things that really strikes me about this particular car, we have a lot of traditional hot rods, or we have rat rods, uh, if you care to call them that that are kind of scary, kind of funky. This one, when you start looking at the engineering on it, this is really nicely put together. It looks like something you'd be real safe going down the street in. Yes, uh, basically you could almost say Frankenstein put it together. Uh, it's safe, uh, all the welds are done right, and consider it as a, it is a red rod, and they also call it old school rods. So it just basically goes from there. Uh, there's different uh, model, uh, different types of uh, hot rods, where there are hot rods, uh, rods, and then there's a rat rod, which basically just put together from anything you basically find. You just piece it together, and to me it looks more traditional when it's basically all rusted. That's the real look for, for it to look today than what it looked back then, because everything was still brand new back then. 
My guess would have been when rat rods first came on the scene that it was a passing trend. Well, I think it's about, what, eight or ten years after that whole thing started and they're, they're here. Uh, it's a real accepted and appreciated portion of the hobby. Did you expect that to happen? Uh, I kind of didn't. I thought it was just a phase, but it just it's keeps going. It doesn't stop. And everybody who built one has built something different, something creative, something that, that catches your eye and you got to come over and look at it. Mm -hmm. Was this a pile of parts that were accumulating in your garage with a dream, or did you start with the, hey, I want to get this, 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 and this, put them all together, and, and did you know what you were doing going into it, or did you have a bunch of stuff you wanted to put together and, and create a car out of? Uh, this is basically a dream for me because I didn't have any of this stuff, what I seen out there on the roads and the car shows, and I just started getting more involved into it. It took me about a couple of years to actually get it started, and then finally I got something going where I first got the cab, and then I had to look for the doors, and I just started piecing it together piece by piece by piece, mm -hmm. and from there it's, it's done. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing the world that you can have fun uh, without spending thirty or forty thousand dollars on a paint job. You got that right. Thank All right. you. All right. Thank you. <laughs>
Irv Helms, this 1934 Dodge pickup truck is very, very pretty. Tell us about it. Thank you. Uh, it's a 34 Dodge on an original 34 Dodge frame. The front end's been boxed uh, with a Mustang II front cross member and tubular A-arms, disc brakes. Uh, the rear has been back halved with a triangulated four-link and nine-inch forward rear end. It's got a Chevy 350 with a 350 automatic in it. Um, all the body mods, everything has been smoothed on it, uh, street rod type style hood on it, uh, all the dress up kit on the motor with the Sanderson headers and so forth. Uh, the interior is all done in tweed uh, with glide bucket seats, uh, overhead console. Um, the rear has a custom tunnel cover that's on gas shocks, hide the fuel cell out back in the battery. Um, Pretty much just all your typical street rod stuff. Well, 34 Dodge pickup truck, uh, you know, they're not totally rare, but I probably can count on, you know, three fingers of one hand, uh, the number of them that I've seen over the years. I've tried going on the internet and Googling uh, 34 Dodges and looking up and get history on them and the manufacturer, and these things were $317 from uh, Detroit back in 1934. They did come with suicide doors from the factory. Um, there's not too many out there. I found the pictures of a couple locally here in California, but like, like you say, they're rare to find. Mm -hmm. Something I've noticed in, in the recent past is, is pickup trucks uh, were kind of what, whatever you could buy for $30,000 in a coupe or a sedan, you could buy the same year of the same manufacturer, but in a truck for about uh, 50 to 25 percent less. That seems to have gone away. Trucks are, are fully appreciated as much as the, the, you know, the full-bodied cars. Any thoughts on that? My thoughts are is I've always been a pickup truck guy. From the age of 18, working in construction and stuff, I've always owned a pickup truck. You know, my last truck, my last one was a 37 Chevy pickup. Um, I've had numerous, I've probably had 20 pickups. I just favor a pickup truck. Mm -hmm. Well, I've had one truck in my past, a nice customized 70 Chev with a chop top by four inches. And the comment I got from people was, I never thought of you as a truck guy, which is like, well, what's a truck guy? So we, we just met a truck guy here. Irv, thank you very much for being on the Vintage Vehicle Show. Beautiful 1934 Dodge. <laughs>have had a great time here at the Thunderfest Car Show in Covina, California. A big thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for inviting us to cover the show and a big thank you to you for watching the show. So we will see you again next week. See you then. Bye-bye.